Hello guys, Alex the Grumpy One again, and this is a video on the 3W Tiguan TDI 2012 full service. Um, so as you can see, uh, I've got all the service bits here for the full service. So you're going to need the fuel filter, got the part numbers there, and the oil filter. There's the part numbers, there's a choice of them sometimes, there's like three different oil filters, so if you give them all the correct details, you know, car parts or JR, they'll give you the right one, or they should do. And then you got the pollen filter. I use MAN filters, they are cheaper filters, but MAN ones are the ones I've always been using, I never had any issues with them. So that's the air filter. And as usual on the full services, I usually use an injector cleaner or fuel system cleaner or DPF cleaner, depends which one I need. DPF on this one is fine, so I'm just going to use the little injector cleaner there. It usually improves your performance slightly. And there's an oil filter, triple QX. It's an average price oil. It's not too bad, they have around 40 pounds. 5 litres, um, it also depends, you might get different oil, 540, depends if, you got, has, uh, if your car has got a DPF filter or not, but like I said, if you give the right details to your car parts, they usually help you out and tell you what options you got and what you're going to need. Right guys, I'm going to show you a few bits under the bonnet now. Right guys, so to start you have to get your bonnet up, the release catch is here, so what you have to do is just pull it, and you hear the click, all you got left now is the safety catch, which is located right in the middle, if you get your hand in there, your fingers, and just pull it up, you'll release it, there you go. Let's just secure it quick. Right, that locates in there. Make sure it's safe. They locate it right in the hole. Um, right, while we're here, I'm just going to take you through a few things quickly. I don't know how um, much you know about the underbonnet components and serviceable parts, but I'll just take you through it. It's very quick. So starting on the left, you've got the cooling bottle, which has got a level that you can check. It's quite easy. And um, now we've got the fuel filter that's in there. So to replace it, you have to take this cover off. Then you got the brake fluid there. So you got the sensor on the cap there, which in case the brake fluid is low, it will give you a warning message on your dashboard. So that's what it's there for. Right, this is where your dipstick is, check the oil level, so what you have to do is take it out, wipe it off with a bit of paper, I've just done it, so you can see my one is right on the maximum, where the second mark is, it's right there, so that's good. That's the top up cap they got there. Um, then this is the location for your air filter which is held on by torque screws there all around there we'll be doing that later in the video there's your screen wash cap this is where you top up your screen wash You've got a little filter there this is where your battery is located and now I'm just going to show you where the pollen filter is I will be showing to you later in the video as well, but it's located under the glove box. There's a cover they have to take off, and the pollen filter will be under there. So 
So what you have to do, I'm going to show you the oil filter location. What you have to do is take this cover off, the engine cover. It's quite easy. It just pops up. It's held on the rubber grommets. I'm going to show you now. It's one there, one there, one there, and one there. You can always put your WD-40 on them. Makes it easier to take them off afterwards. So as you can see, they just locate it on them little bits. Right, while we're here, there's your injectors. All four of them. And the oil filter is located down there. Well, I'm going to show you how to undo it and what you have to do. You have to undo this Torx bolt here to remove the sensor so you can get the socket on there with an extension. And while we're here, there's also, you can see the cover for the cam belt. You can remove the cover to inspect the cam belt if there's any damage on it. But I would suggest to do that with your local mechanic. And there's also a record in your service book, which is quite important. You need to know when it was changed and when it is due. On different engines, there's different time intervals and mileage interval. So you need to double check that, please. But yeah, guys, so now I think we're ready to start servicing the vehicle. Right guys, so this is the part of the oil change. So like I said, first you're going to need to remove the T30 screw there that holds the sensor. Now I usually do the oil change and you should do the oil change while the engine is warm because it gets rid of more oil and quicker as well. So there you go, I'll remove that. Once you remove that, it gives you an access to the oil filter housing there. It is 32 socket that you're going to need with the extension. So it goes on there. And what I do is before draining the oil, I just crack the oil filter off. Just so it's loose in there. I'm going to show you now. So crack it off a couple of turns. A bit more than a couple, I suppose. Till it feels loose. Get the tool out. Like I said, you can put a bit of blue roll around there, which is what I'm gonna do. So it doesn't leak. And like I said, you undo it so it's loose. And that will let the oil escape from the oil housing when you drain it. So I just leave it like that until I drain the oil from the sun plug. So the vehicle is slightly up in the air. You can get to it with the vehicle just on the ground, but it's very tight in there. So I recommend raising the vehicle up in the air slightly. I do obviously in the lift if you've got access to a lift. But please make sure you're careful when you're doing it. I got jacks and the axle stand there as well. And handbrake on so the vehicle doesn't roll back. And the locks there as well. Both sides are the same. So like I said, make sure it's safe before you do anything. And the next step will be you have to remove the belly pan, the engine cover, under cover you got there. I'm going to show you how to do it now. Right guys, while you're under here, uh, there's going to be three, they usually Torx 30 or 35 screws, but for some reason I've got 30 mil bolts here, there should be three of them, they have to take off, and then you're going to have Torx 25 little screws, i got a few missing, but they're going to be holding the belly pan all around. So you see there's a couple in here as well at the front but I'm going to take it off and it'll be a lot easier to show you understand where they are so I'm going to take it off now and show you where they are 
Right guys, so I got the belly pan off. Like I said, the Torx 25s were holding it on the sides. As you can see, one, two, three. Another one on the front, four, then five, six, seven. And on this belly pan, there's different types of belly pan, but on this one, there were only two. Like I said, I had 30 mil bolts for some reason, but usually there are Torx 30 or 35 holding it there. And then all you have to do is just slide it off. You'll come out, it pretty much drops off. Make sure you remember which way it goes back in. But like I say, it's quite easy. And now you can see the sound plug. And that's where it is. It is 19 mil. So I'm going to be getting my bucket now and do it now to drain the oil. Right guys, so I'm going to do the sound plug. Got my bucket under it. It does say on the Morris Lubrificant website that it takes about 4.3 litres. So make sure you got something that's big enough to catch all of that. So like I said, it's 90 mil. Let's get the socket on that and do it. Make sure you got some blue roll in case it leaks anywhere. So I'll hold the bucket there and get ready to get dirty. There we go. Keep your eye on the oil draining because as you get less you're going to start draining a little bit closer so make sure you move your make sure you move your bucket and that's pretty much it wait till you drain it i would usually wait about 10 minutes so it's completely empty get rid of all the oil in there Right, while you're draining your oil, now you can take the oil filter out because it shouldn't have any oil on it now. So it's a bit tricky to get it out here. It's slightly tight, but it does come out. As you can see, but there you are, like a bit more oil. Great. Right, so that's that out. Right guys, so it's been draining for about 10 minutes now. There's not nothing coming out now. So now I'm going to put the sump plug back in and get the oil drained out of there. The torque setting for the sump plug I will put in the end of the video, but it is around 30 newton meters. They always are on them. I do recommend using a new sump plug with a washer. They usually sell them in Euro car parts. So I'm going to do it up now. Make sure you do it up to the right torque. Because you definitely don't want that leaking. I'm gonna recheck it in a second with my torque wrench once I took this oil drain out of here. But like I said, make sure you do it to 30 newton meters. Right, now that I got going oil drain out, I can replace the oil filter. So it does come with three seals, one's located in there and the other two here. So the oil filter you have to hold it quite tight and then it pops up. 
comes off. There's only one way it goes back on. So I drain the rest of the oil in there. And I'll place the filter for now in there. And use a little hook tool to get the seals off. If you have new seals in your oil filter, the new oil filter, it should come with it. So pull one off. And the other two at the top. And the tiny one now. that off, place them off, and now we'll open the new filter, I've already checked it was the right one, so as you can see, we get new oil filter, and three new seals, so let's get the seals back on, make sure they're located correctly and sit in properly, Go. So that's the first one, the smallest one at the top. That's on. And the second one. And the last one, the biggest one. It sits in that groove there. Get that on there. Make sure it's located correctly. Check it all around. And now you can put the new filter in. You can see that on the new one, the bigger hole is the one that goes on it. They're different. So the bigger one is the one that's gonna slide on there. And it needs to click. It's located correctly and secure. There you go, that's on there now. So it's ready to go back in the car on the engine. Right, now we can put the oil filter back in. There's only one way it can go in. There's a hole in the middle that it should locate into. Right, and just do it up as tight as you can with your hand. Make sure it's even. And then get your socket on. And like I said, it even says on the top of the oil filter housing, the torque setting for it is 25 newton meters. That's done up. I'm going to recheck it with my torque. Right, there I go. Got one of them, so we'll recheck in a second. And once that done, and your sun plug is back in and done up, I don't usually put the belly pan on straight away. I put the oil in first, and like I said, it says about 4.3 liters. And then check the level, start the car up, drive it for a while, then check for leaks, and then put the belly pan back on after checking for leaks from the sun plug. If it's all good, then obviously you're going to put the belly pan back on. So let's put the oil back in now. Right, so at this stage, don't forget to do the sensor up. You can still see the filter once you've done it. And now we can get some oil in there. Right, so like I said, on a data it said 4.3 litres, I usually start with 4, then double check it. So let's start pouring it in. Like I said, make sure your sun plug is back in before you do this. Because you definitely don't want to be wasting all the oil, making the floor dirty. Now some people might use different oil type or different oil make. 
each one prefers their own I don't mind that like I said this is the one I've been using for the last six years and I've had an issue with it and I also use the Mori soils and never had an issue with them when they actually support you quite well So I know this is slightly boring. Just double check how much I got left. That's perfect. Got one litre left. So I got four in there. Obviously when the vehicle is on the level ground, you pull the dipstick out, clean it up. It's nice and clean. You can see the max and min. Put it back in and take it out to three seconds, and you will see that it might be on the max already, which it is. But that's because you haven't run the vehicle yet, and the oil haven't gone to the oil housing, so it will take 0.2.3 in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put in another point three in there I'm sure that will be perfect now that will do so I can put the old cap back on and now you're ready to start the car up, let it run for 10 seconds, and then double check the oil level. Alright guys, so I had the car running for about 20 seconds. I can turn it off. And check around the oil filter housing, see if there's any oil leaks with the light. My one looks fine. And also don't forget to double check if there's any oil coming out from your sump plug. That looks nice and clean. So the belly pan can go back on now. And you can put the cover back on the engine. And that's your oil change done. Don't forget please to get rid of your oil. I suggest you either take it to the skip. I usually put it back in a can. And the oil filter as well and the fuel filter. Take it to the skip or take it to your local garage. I'm pretty sure if you give them a fiver, they'll recycle that for you. So yeah guys, that's the oil change done. Right guys, this is the part on the air filter. So you have to undo a Torx 25 screws that hold it in so the screws don't actually come out undo them to get loose like I said there's eight of them and just lift the cover up and there's your air filter just lift it out there's always going to be a, a bit of rubbish in there so you can clean it out some leaf of dead flies so see if you can get as much as you can out and here we got the new air filter. It's nice and clean. So just place it in there. Make sure it goes in evenly. And put the cover back on. And screw them all back in. So like I said, there's going to be eight of them. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight down there. So once they're all done up, it's all good. Make sure they're all done up so there's no air leaks. Now we'll take you to the next step. Right, now we can do the 
pollen filter. Like I said, it's located on the passenger side under the glove box. If you look in there, you got this cover they have to remove. So there's gonna be two clips holding it in. So I have to do is unscrew them. It's nice and easy. Comes off. One stay off. You can pull the cover off. That's the cover off. And there it is. That's the pollen filter where it's located. So all you have to do on this is slide it to the side and pull it down. You can see how it's held in. Just slide it off. This will make a bit of mess while you're pulling it out because there's going to be a lot of rubbish in there, as you can see. So just pull it out. It only goes in one way. So you can see that's quite dirty and full of rubbish. And here we got the new one. So this is the way it's going to go back in. quite flexible because it's similar to paper so make sure it's located in there correctly and then slide the cover the cover goes in the holes that you got in the pollen filter so pull it, push it up then just slide it back and it clicks in and it's now secure so it's as easy as that that's that job done all I have to do now is put the cover back on So get the cover back on there. Make sure it aligns with all the air vents that you got here. And make sure they're gonna align with the holes for your plastic clips. Screw them back in. Let's both of them in. And that's the pollen filter part done. Alright guys, so in this step I'm going to show you how to do the fuel filter. So you're going to need a Torx 20 for this one. A um, little can to catch the these are going to be dripping off the fuel filter when you're taking it out and obviously the new fuel filter so there's five Torx 20s in there so you have to undo them all make sure you don't drop them the only little ones as you can see so there's five of them and I also put a bit of blue roll around there so because it will leak and that will catch all the diesel that's coming out, so it's not going to stink afterwards. So like I said, let's get five of them out. They will be slightly tight. Just be careful with them. That's the last one. Right, five of them. Now you have to gently lift it up and 
there we are that's the fuel filter in there so first thing I would do while we're still here is to check if you got the same filter It looks like it should be the same, but I have to take it out to have a better look because it might be slightly different on the fittings, but as long as they're the same size, it should be fine. So like I say, now we have to gently remove it, get a bit of blue roll. All I have to do is just lift this cover up. Like I said, this will be dripping a little bit. There you go. Put that in there. You can also have a look inside the filter housing, see if there's any bits of metal or any dirt. If there is, you can always take the whole uh, housing off. It's only held by three 10 mil bolts. Well, there's two 10 mil bolts and one nut. So you can always take it off and clean it out. Just make sure it's completely clean and all around the edges as well for when you're gonna reassemble it. So I'm gonna have a look if my filters are the same. As you can see, they got similar fitting at the top and they the same size. The only difference is the older filter is slightly longer, it is slightly different make, but this will fit in properly. So I'm gonna show you how to fit it in now. Alright guys, so I've checked the filter, there's a new one, um, like I said, now we have to clean the top bit, make sure there's no dirt there, so it seals it properly, and get the new filter in there, make sure the seal sits correctly around there, so it's the right size, and all you have to do now, is just locate the middle part and push it in and that should be done now so put the screws back in when I do the screws up I'll do them all up evenly so just start them all up Do them finger tight. And do them up slightly. Make sure the cover is going back on evenly. Don't do them up too tight, just so it feels right. I will give you a torque setting for them in the end of the video because unfortunately I haven't got laptop with me today to give you the torque settings, but I will give it to you in the end of the video. So they're all done up now. So once they're done up to the correct torque setting, 
Um, you clean everything up. Make sure there's no diesel around it. And I use my diesel cleaner now. Obviously make sure you got oil in the engine and it's ready to start up. But what I do is I use the diesel treatment, put it in the tank. And what you have to do is cycle the ignition about six times. And if you cycle it six times, ignition on and off, which I'm going to show you now how to do. And then start it up and check for leaks. Let it run for a while and check all around the housing for any diesel leaks. You can rev it up a little bit, give it a bit more pressure and check if it's not leaking. If it's not leaking, then it's all good. Job done. It shouldn't leak. Like I said, I get my treatment in there. Right, now you get in the car, get the key in, and turn the ignition on. You can hear the pump pumping. Um, I usually turn it on for about 10 seconds and then turn it off and on again and do it six times like I said for 10 seconds once you've done that you can start the car up and check for the leaks alright guys so done it six times this is number seven on the clutch I actually start it very well usually it might take a couple of turns to start but like I said that's what you do unless you emptied your fuel filter housing of diesel so there's no non diesel left in there then I would actually put that can of diesel treatment that I did in the tank I would actually put it in the fuel housing so there is something in there or if you got some diesel just put it in there it helps I know in some newer models you will need to plug in with the diagnostic tool and prime the pump but on this one you don't have to so like I said get a light and check around the housing around the seal for any leaks I can't see any leaks here. It looks clean to me. If you're not sure, you can always rev it up, give it a bit more pressure, and check for leaks again. But my one's looking good. So that's the fuel part done. Alright guys, so the last part is once you've done all the service, the oil change and etc. The last part is to reset your service light or service message. So you, what you'll get is service due message or inspection due, depends on the system. My one's not actually due, but I'm just doing it because obviously I've got some time and I wanted to make a video on it. And I always like to do full service on the cars that I buy. So my one's saying I got service in pretty much 6,000 miles, 100 days. So what you have to do to reset it is turn the ignition on. Now go into settings. So you got the settings there. Now go down. And you're going to have service there. So press OK. You get information, which is what we've just seen. And also you get a reset. So what you have to do is just press OK. And OK again. And it will come up with a message saying service reset. 
So now if you look at the information, is servicing 9,400 miles or one year pretty much. So on some of the cars, you might get the inspection warning as well. And when you get the inspection warning, you have to turn your hazard lights on and then do either the same procedure or do the procedure where you turn the ignition off then press and hold the set button and while you're pressing and holding it you'll have to turn the ignition on and they'll come up with message resetting the inspection time interval and it'll reset it or do it through the menu and it'll reset that as well but I haven't got that on this one I know some of them do so I just wanted to let you know but I do have to have the hazard lights on for that one Right guys, thank you very much for watching this video and like I said, I'm going to be putting the torque settings for the fuel filter and for the sump plug in the end of my video, so please check that to make sure you've done it correctly. And if you got any other questions or if you need any other info, please let me know, comment below and I'll be more than happy to answer or do another video for you. Alright guys, have a good day and stay safe. Bye. Thank you.